308, Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104. To all law enforcement entities, this is not an admission of guilt. I am making an ASMR video now. Over the next few moments, I will be reading to you several of the things I've said throughout the televised biography of my life, titled Breaking Bad. It is my hope that somehow you'll find the series of tragedies that is my life relaxing. So, without any further ado, let me start from the very beginning. Yes, lung cancer. Inoperable. My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308 Necker Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104. To all law enforcement entities, this is not an admission of guilt. I am speaking to my family now. Skyla, you are the love of my life. I hope you know that. Walter Jr., you're my big man. There are, there are going to be some things things. Things you'll come to learn about me in the next few days. I just want you to know that, no matter how it may look, I only had you in my heart. Goodbye. Chemistry is, well, technically, chemistry is a study of matter, but I prefer to say it as a study of change. I mean, it's just, it's the constant, it's the cycle, it's the solution, dissolution just over and over and over. It is growth, then decay, and transformation. It's fascinating, really. No speeches. Short speech. You lost your partner today. What's his name? Uh, Emilio? Emilio is going to prison. The DEA You know the business, and I know the chemistry. I'm thinking, maybe you and I could partner up. That's right, or I turn you in. I saw your setup. Ridiculous. You and I will not make garbage. We will produce a chemically pure and stable product that performs as advertised. No adulterants. No baby formula. No chili powder. Not anymore. I am awake. By the RV, we start tomorrow. Actually, it's just basic chemistry, but thank you, Jesse. I'm glad it's acceptable. Red phosphorus in the presence of moisture and accelerated by heat yields phosphorus hydride, phosphine gas. Seat and just hand this cleaning disc to your car wash professional. Thank you. Come again. I'm sorry, what were you asking me? Oh, yes, that stupid plastic container I asked you to buy. You see, hydrofluoric acid won't eat through plastic. It will, however, dissolve metal, rock, glass, ceramic. So there's that. The moment that I do, are you going to stick me? I have cancer, lung cancer, it's bad. All right, I've got the talking pillow now, okay. Look, we all in this room, we love each other. We want what's best for each other, and I know that. I am very thankful for that. What I want, what I want, what I need, Sometimes I feel like I never actually make any of my own choices, I mean, my entire life. It just seems I never had a real say about any of it. This last one, cancer, all I have left is how I choose to approach this. Of course I do, Skylar. You've read the statistics sheet, these doctors talking about surviving. Two years, like it's the only 
thing that matters. But what good is it to survive if I'm too sick to work, to enjoy a meal, to make love? For what time I have left, I want to live in my own house. I want to sleep in my own bed. I don't want to choke down 40 or 50 pills every single day and lose my hair, lie around too tired to get up, and so nauseated that I can't even move my head. You cleaning up after me, 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 some, I'm some dead man, some artificially alive, just marking time. No. And that's how you would remember me. That's the worst part. So, that is my thought process, Skylar. I'm sorry, it's just I choose not to do it. Wanna cook? Heisenberg. I don't imagine I'll be here very long. Fifty thousand dollars. Thirty-five for the pound of meth you stole, and fifteen for my partner's pain and suffering. You got one part of that wrong. This is not meth. Money up front. One pound is not going to cut it. You have to take two. Fulminate of mercury. A little tweak of chemistry. In World War II, the Germans had an artillery piece. It's the biggest in the world, called the Gustav gun. And it weighed a thousand tons. for a month without ever disabling it. But drop a commando, one man, with just a bag of this, and you can melt right through four inches of steel and destroy that gun forever. So yes, I think it'll cut through any lock we're likely to find. Adjusting for inflation, a good state college adjusting for inflation, say $45,000 a year, two kids, Seven months pregnant with a baby we didn't intend. My 15 year old son has cerebral palsy. I am an extremely overqualified high school chemistry teacher. When I can work, I make $43,700 a year. I have watched all of my colleagues and friends surpass me in every way imaginable, and within 18 months, Jesse, look at me. You are a blowfish. A blowfish? Think about it. Small in stature, not swift, not cunning, easy prey for predators. But the blowfish has a secret weapon, doesn't he? Doesn't he? What does the blowfish do, Jesse? What does the blowfish do? The blowfish puffs up, okay? The blowfish puffs himself up four or five times larger than normal. But why? Why does he do that? Because it makes him intimidating, that's why. Intimidating so that the other scarier fish are scared off, and that's you. You are a blowfish. Don't you see? It's just all, all an illusion. It's nothing but air. Now, who 
who messes with the blowfish, Jesse? I have spent my whole life scared, frightened of things that could happen, might happen, might not happen. Fifty years I've spent like that, finding myself awake at 3 a.m. But you know what? Ever since my diagnosis, I sleep just fine. I came to realize it's that fear is the worst of it. That's the real enemy. So get up, get out in the real world, and you kick that bastard as hard as you can, right in the teeth. Three entire bags of Funyuns. God. How about something with some protein, maybe? Something green, huh? How are you even alive? Jesse, back when I asked you to put the keys in a safe place, where did you put them? Is this just a genetic thing with you? Is it congenital? Did, you, did your mother drop you on your head when you were a baby? Yes, I see your point. Your imbecility being what it is, I should have known to say, Jesse, don't leave the keys in the ignition the entire two days. Okay, just... Alright, so we need to jump the battery somehow. Smoking marijuana, eating Cheetos, and masturbating do not constitute plans in my book. You brought a meth lab to the airport. Jesse, Jesse, your body is running dangerously low on electrolytes. Sodium, potassium, calcium, and when they're gone, your brain ceases to communicate with your muscles. Your lungs stop breathing. Your heart stops pumping. You can go marching out there, and within an hour you will be dead. Do you have do you have any money? Change, I mean, coins. Okay. Gather them and 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 the washers and the nuts and bolts and screws and whatever little pieces of metal we can think of that is galvanized. It has to be galvanized or solid zinc. And bring me bring me brake pads. The front wheels should have discs. Take them off and bring them to me. You said it yourself. A battery. Move. You're buying the wrong matches. Those matches. They're the wrong kind. Red phosphorus is found in the striker strips, not the matches themselves. You need to get the big 200 count box of individual matchbooks. More striker strips. You understand? Those only have the one. And don't buy everything in one place. Do it piecemeal. Different items. Different stores. Attracts less attention. Hmm? You following me here? Stay out of my territory. I simply respect the chemistry. The chemistry must be respected. Yeah, I've got this nephew. This nephew who is, I mean. He's an adult, but you can't infantilize them. You can't live their life for them. But still, I mean, there is that frustration. You know, that... God, that frustration that goes along with, you know... Yes, as a matter of fact, I do know what is best for you, so listen. But of course, they don't. I mean, what do you do with someone like that? I feel like I'm running out of ways to explain this to you, but once more I shall try. This fly is a major problem for us. It will ruin our batch when we need to destroy it and every trace of it so we can cook. Failing that, we're dead. There's no more room for error, not with these people. I've been to my oncologist, Jesse, just last week. I'm still in remission. No end in sight. No, I missed it. There was some perfect moment that passed me right by, but I had to have enough to leave them. That was the whole point. None of this makes any sense if I don't have enough. And it had to be before she found out. Skylar, it had to be before that. I'm saying I lived too long. You want them to actually miss you. You want their memories of you to be, but she just won't, she, she just won't understand. I mean, no matter how well I explain it, these days she just has this, this, I, I mean, I truly believe there exists some combination of words. There must exist certain words in a certain specific order that can explain all of this, but with her, 
possibly. Oh, I know the moment. It was the night Jane died. I was at home, and we needed diapers, so I said I'd go. But it was just an excuse. Actually, that was the night I brought you your money, remember? And afterward, I stopped at a bar. It was odd. I never do that. Go to a bar alone. I just walked in, sat down, and never told you. I sit down, and this man, this stranger, he engages me in a conversation. He is a complete stranger, but he turns out to be Jane's father, Donald Margolis. Of course, I didn't know it at the time. I mean, he's just some guy at a bar. I just didn't put it together until after the crash when he was all over the news. Think of the odds. Once I tried to calculate them, but they're astronomical. I mean, think of the odds of me going in and sitting down that night in that bar next to that man. Water on Mars. Family. I told him that I had a daughter, and he told me he had one too. And he said, never give up on family. And I didn't. I took his advice. My God, the universe is random. It's not inevitable. It's simple chaos. It's subatomic particles and endless, endless collision. That's what science teaches us. But what does this say? What is it telling us that the very night this man's daughter dies, it's me was having a drink with him. I mean, how could that be random? No, no, it's, uh, oh, that was the moment, that night. I should never have left home, never gone to your house. Maybe things would have, oh, I was, I was at home watching TV, some nature program about elephants, and Skylar and Holly were in another room. I can hear them on the baby monitor. She was singing a lullaby. Oh, if I had just lived right up to that moment and not one second more, that would have been perfect. Run. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? Do you know how much I make a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. business big enough that it could be listed on the NASDAQ, goes belly up, disappears, it ceases to exist without me. No, you clearly don't know who you are talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No, I am the one who knocks. To hell with your cancer. I've been living with cancer for the better part of a year. Right from the start, it's a death sentence. That's what they keep telling me. Well, guess what? Every life comes with a death sentence. So every few months, I come in here for my regular scan, knowing full well that one of these times, hell, maybe even today, I'm going to hear some bad news. But until then, who's in charge? sorry after everything you've done for me what have you done for me you've killed me is what you've done you signed my death warrant and now you want advice i'll give you advice go to mexico and screw up like i know you will and wind up in a barrel somewhere where is it where's the rest the money skyler where is the rest skyler where is the money lived under the threat of death for a year now. And because of that, I have made choices. Listen to me. I alone should suffer the consequences of these choices. No one else. And those consequences, they're coming. No more prolonging the inevitable. No, you don't even believe that. Gus's camera is everywhere. Please.
cigarette out of your locker? Come on, don't you see? You are the last piece of the puzzle. You are everything that he's wanted. You're his cook now. You're the cook, and you've proven you can run a lab without me. And now that cook has reason to kill me. Think about it. It's brilliant. So go ahead. If you think that I am capable of doing this, then go. Put a bullet in my head and kill me right now. It's over. We're safe. I won. So, Mike threatened me. He threatened Jesse. He probably threatened someone before breakfast this morning. It's what he does. Come on, you're up here. Horsepower isn't everything. Don't you know that? You have to factor in drag and torque and suspension and weight of the car. And listen, one more factor that you're not thinking about. The experience of the driver. And I totally got you there. I got you there. Oh, I really? I drive like a G. <laughs> Tell me, can I geezer do donuts? I don't think so. Jesse, you asked me if I was in the meth business or the money business. Neither. I'm in the empire business. You know. You all know exactly who I am. Say my name. Yeah, you do. I'm the cook. I'm the man who killed Gus Fring. Are you sure? That's right. Now say my name. You're goddamn right. The methylamine isn't coming. I'm the man who's keeping it. Mike doesn't know where it is. Only I do. And you're dealing with me now, not him. That 1,000 gallons of methylamine is worth more in my hands than it is in yours or anyone else's for that matter. But I need distribution. That's right. So if you agree to give up your cook and sell my product instead, I'll give you 35% of the take. I know all about your operation. My partners here tell me that you produce a meth that is 70% pure, if you're lucky. What I produce is 99.1% pure. So, it's gray school t-ball versus the New York Yankees. Yours is just some tepid, off-brand generic cola. What I'm making is classic Coke. you believe that there's a hell, I don't know if you're into that, but we're, we're already pretty much going there, right? But I'm not going to lie down until I get there. What have you got in your life? Nothing. Nobody. Oh, wait. Yes. Video games and go-karts. Just take a breath, okay? Just listen to yourself. These wild accusations, they could destroy our family. And for what? Hank, my cancer is back. I'm sorry you feel this way. I want to beat this thing, I do. I'm back on chemo, and I'm fighting like hell. But the truth is, in six months, you won't have someone to prosecute. Even, even if somehow you are able to convince anyone that I was capable of doing these things, you and I both know see the inside of a jail cell. I'm a dying man who runs a car wash. My right hand to God. That's all I am. What's the point? That is not going to happen. If that's true, if you don't know who I am, then maybe your best course would be Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308 Negro Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104. This is my confession. If you're watching this
chemistry knowledge to cook methamphetamine, which he would then sell using connections that he made through his career with the DEA. I was astounded. I, I always thought Hank was a very moral man, and I was particularly vulnerable at the time. Something he knew and took advantage of. I was reeling from a cancer diagnosis that was poised to bankrupt my family. Hank took me in on a ride along and showed me just how much money even a small meth operation could make, and I was weak. I didn't want my family to go into financial ruin, so I agreed. Hank had a partner, a businessman named Gustavo Fring. Hank sold me into servitude to this man. Eventually, Hank and Fring had a falling out. Things escalated. Fring was able to arrange, uh, I guess, uh, I guess you call it a hit on Hank, and failed, but Hank was seriously injured. And I wound up paying his medical bills, which amounted to a little over $177,000. Upon recovery, Hank was bent on revenge. Working with a man named Hector Salamanca, he plotted to kill Fring. The bomb that he used was built by me, and he gave me no option in it. I have often contemplated suicide, but I am a coward. I wanted to go to the police, but I was frightened. Hank had risen to become the head of the Albuquerque DEA. To keep me in line, he took my children. For three months, he kept them. My wife had no idea of my criminal activities and was horrified to learn what I had done. I was in hell. I hated myself for what I had brought upon my family. Recently, I tried once again to quit, and in response, he gave me this. I can't take this anymore. I live in fear every day. see this man for what he is. You're full of colorful metaphors, aren't you, Saul? Please, old yeller, just brimming with advice, do not float that idea again. Todd, I think I might have another job for your uncle. Jesse, look, Jesse, I don't know what you plan on doing here, but don't you touch my money. No, 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 no. Jesse, Jesse, please. You 
you have no right to discuss anything about what I do. Oh, what? What the hell do you know about me anyway? Nothing. I built this. Me. Me alone. Nobody else. You mark my words, Skylar. Toe the line or you will wind up just like Hank. You're never gonna see Hank again. He crossed me. You would think about that. Family or no, you let that sink in. I've still got things left to do. Stay a little longer. Two hours. I'll give you another ten thousand. Please. Elliot, if we're going to go that way, you're going to need a bigger knife. All right. That is nine million seven hundred twenty thousand dollars. I earned it, and you're going to give it to my children. On my son's 18th birthday, which is ten months and two days from today, you will give him this money in the form of an irrevocable trust. You will tell him it is his to do with as he sees fit, but with the hope that he uses it for his college education and for the betterment of his family. I can't. My wife and son hate me. They won't take my money. Even if they did, the federal government wouldn't let them. But two rich benefactors who are known for their charitable endeavors, who think nothing of, for instance, writing a $28 million check to help victims of methamphetamine abuse, I have to think that your money would be very welcome. Don't move. Don't. Don't dare move a muscle. You don't want them to think that you're trying to get away. Just breathe. Just this afternoon, I had an extra $200,000 that I would have loved dearly to leave on top of this table. Instead, I gave it to the two best hitmen west of the Mississippi. Now, Whatever happens to me tomorrow, they'll still be out there keeping tabs. And if, for any reason, that my children do not get this money, a kind of countdown will begin. Maybe a day or so later, maybe a week, a year, when you're going for a walk into Santa Fe or Manhattan or Prague, wherever, and you're talking about your stock prices without a worry in the world and then suddenly you will hear the scrape of a footstep behind you and before you can even turn around pop cheer up beautiful people this is where you get to make it right I don't have any to give you I spent the last of it getting here all I have to give you is this call the D force my way in. Tell them, tell them I wanted bacon and eggs on my birthday. And then I gave you that ticket. Those numbers are GPS coordinates. A burial site. That's where they will find Hank and Steve Gomez. That's where I buried our money. The men who stole it from us. The men who still have it. They murdered Hank and Steve and put them in that hole. Now you trade that for a deal with the prosecutor. Get yourself out of this, Skylar. Skylar, all the things that I did, you need to understand. I did it for me. I liked it. I was good at it. And... I was really... I was... Alive. Do it. You want this. I want this. It's Walt. How are you feeling? Kind of under the weather? Like you've got the flu? That would be the ricin I gave you. I slipped it into that stevia crap you're always putting in your tea. Well, goodbye, Lydia. Goodbye, listeners. This marks the end of our little 
ASMR.